Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be presenting my personalized learning experience on pro-social guidance and a touch of um, social-emotional learning. So I want to start by first kind of explaining what pro-social guidance is. So it's a type of social-emotional learning that focuses on behaviors that benefit others. So this can be done by um, one sharing with friends or family, helping others, giving to others, and even sharing kind words or advice. So my two goals for uh, the past couple of weeks on um, the pro-social guidance was integrating pro-social guidance into the classroom and promoting the practice of social-emotional learning in the classroom. So how can we integrate pro-social behavior into the classroom? We can integrate this behavior by building positive emotions, social connections, and engagement that will ultimately promote learning. This can be done through praising students when they behave in a pro-social manner, using inductive discipline to correct unwanted behaviors rather than punishment-based uh, um, discipline, and forming positive and healthy teacher-student relationships. So one of the things that I um, came across while researching was kind of a tactic that is essentially building a pond of pro-social behaviors in your classroom. So this pond is a place where students can find new thoughts, words, or behaviors when they need a better pro-social choice. And building a pro-social pond in your classroom allows for students to fish for better choices, behaviors, thoughts, or words. And most often, students would make a better choice if they had another option available to them. And this pond gives students other options. So one of the sayings that I always hear in the classroom is, you could have made a better choice. Well, this pond allows students to kind of fish for another choice instead of making a negative one or one that can impact their peers around them. Um, creating a pond can be done by having group discussions with your students about the kind actions, choices, or words that they can do for others inside and outside of the classroom. And as a class, the pond can be created on an anchor chart or a bulletin board. And in the pond will be those pro-social behaviors that students have done for each other inside and outside of the classroom. So this can look like a student named Bill. He decided to hold the door open for his classmates going out to recess. One of his classmates could notice that and could write that up onto the bulletin board. Um, we hold doors for others who might need them to be open for them. So that can be an example of something that they put into the pond. Another way to integrate pro-social guidance into the classroom is by providing opportunities for students to practice pro-social behaviors. So collaboration between students and the classroom is so crucial when practicing pro-social behaviors. Um, this provides students with the opportunities to socialize and build positive relationships with their peers throughout their school day. And this can be done in a number of ways, which can include passing out materials during lessons, or picking up materials after lessons, um, group work or partner work, and allowing students to choose who they work with during that time. Um, the teacher may also pick the groups depending on um, you know, what they're doing. And this can be done through online resources like Class, class Dojo or even just popsicle sticks, just choosing groups out of that. Next, my next goal is promoting the practice of social emotional learning in the classroom. So SEL is a process in which an individual learns and applies knowledge that promotes the, the development of a healthy identity. So there are four key competencies in SEL. They are self-awareness and awareness of others, positive attitudes and values, responsible decision making, and social interaction skills. Um, I think it is critical for students to experience SEL in their elementary classroom. It ultimately improves classroom behavior and also decreases misbehavior and aggression, therefore giving students a solid foundation to grow on as they go through school and have different experiences. So one of my, the goal was how to incorporate those SEL practices in the classroom. So I compiled a list here and the first one is acknowledging each student's efforts in the classroom is highly important as it nurtures a culture of kindness. The second is having a peace corner or a calm down corner. 
Um, it allows for students to step away from the environment of the classroom and to be with themselves for however long they need to. This promotes the student's ability to regulate their emotions and to also recognize how they are feeling and why they may need a moment to reground or regroup themselves. The third, I think, is very important. It's teaching students mindfulness and to be in the moment and aware of their bodies. Um, this can be done through meditating, breathing exercises, or even sensory, sensory activities. Um, in my field placement, my second grade students, after lunch, um, they would have about 10 minutes to kind of lay down in one spot, and we would go through a meditation kind of podcast that the teacher would put on, and it would give them a moment to reconnect with their bodies and just get ready to learn for the rest of the day. Lastly, having a time where students can check in with their feelings doesn't only promote their ability to, to identify their feelings and talk about them, but can also help in strengthening the student-teacher relationship. And this can be done verbally or even in writing, depending on uh, whichever way the student is more comfortable with. And lastly, what I've learned. So through my research, I have learned that integrating pro-social guidance into the classroom is a task that absolutely deserves a place in the everyday routine of a classroom. Um, in so many classrooms, and especially in my past field placements, there wasn't really a time for um, SEL or even practicing pro-social behaviors because everything else is so jam-packed in the schedule that it's kind of left behind. But I think that promoting a culture of positivity and community within the classroom gives students the opportunity to understand that there can be harmony within a community. And at the end of the day, when the classroom is a community and there's positivity, more learning can get done. There's less misbehavior, less interruptions. And additionally, SEL is so important for younger students to understand and deal with. It allows them to not only understand themselves, but also the others around them. And that will become more important as they grow up and become a larger part of society. So that was my personalized learning experience. And thank you for watching.